to a new episode of the Kinetic Knitter podcast. My name is Kara. I am the dyer behind the Kinetic Knitter yarns. Um, it has been a while since I have podcasted or recorded anything. So I am here and I don't have that much to share because I have been in a knitting funk, which is why I haven't podcasted because I haven't honestly had a ton to share. Um, but I am going to share the things that I have been working on lately. My cat is chewing a leaf in the background, so I apologize for any crunching noises. Um, she'll probably make an appearance here and there. And then, yeah, I'm gonna go over some works in progress, one finished object, and some new yarn acquisitions, just a couple, and um, give you a little preview of some things coming to the shop uh, later this month, probably, and maybe a few life updates, but that's, that'll about wrap us up. So let's get started. Um, right now I am wearing my stripes sweater. I know this tank top doesn't go under it, but my hair is over it. So <laughs> anyway, I'll show you it's, I made this a while ago. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's like a cropped, um, little sweater and it's three quarter length sleeves. And I used my own hand dyed yarn um, in a non superwash sport weight base that I was testing. Excuse me, I don't usually um, carry sport weight, so you probably won't see me carrying sport weight again. I will be honest, sport weight is not my favorite yarn weight. It is just just slightly bigger than fingering weight. And so the garments don't go by any quicker when you make them with sport weight. I'd rather just do DK. So anyhow, um, it is a nice non-super non wash base though. It's very soft to the skin. It's a merino. Um, and so this is like a one of a kind gray. This is, this purple is a dusty purple. It's called Storm. Uh, this is a camel. I called it camel. It's a one of a kind that I dyed and then the cream is an undyed. So that's what the stripes are. And I love it. It's a really easy breezy, um, kind of like spring or fall sweater to wear. It is below zero here in Minneapolis today. So I should be wearing something heavier and warmer because I'm actually freezing, but I don't know, nothing else that I had really felt like something I wanted to wear today. So that's that. <laughs> it's been a while. I feel a little rusty and awkward right now. <laughs> okay, so first I guess I will start with hips. Um, I am going on vacation soon and I wanted to start a project for the airplane that would be quick and easy. Um, so I cast on the new hat pattern by Summer Lee. Excuse me. <coughs> um, it's called the Hi Hibernal, Hibernal? Uh, hat. So she normally designs socks. I don't know that she's designed much other. I think she has like one or two sweaters and maybe a scarf pattern out there, but mostly she designed socks, but she did design a hat pattern using a cable pattern in one of her socks. Um, and I've made the socks. I can't even remember the name of them right now. But uh, yeah, so I started this hat and it is, made using Little Lion Head Knits yarn. It is her Let's Picnic colorway. And it is on her Merino DK base. Let's see, hopefully that's focusing. It's an 8515, very soft, super soft um, Merino nylon blend, right? Yeah, and it's 246 yards, so. Highly recommend a Little Lion Head Knits purchase in your future if you've never bought from her before. I love her stuff. Um, and then I'm just using a size three needle. That's what the pattern calls for. And I'm gonna do the kind with the fold up brim. So I've gotta do five inches of ribbing before I get to move into the cable knit pattern um, that it's made of. So that's exciting and I have to, maybe I'll get through the brim, but I really wanna force myself not to work on it too much before I travel so that I have it for the airplane. Uh, I have some other whips that I could also use on the airplane, but I feel like that one just is like a really travel friendly project. Um, socks are usually travel friendly too, but the ones I'm making right now are just not ones that I would want to bring. So I think I've talked about this whip 
on the podcast before. It is the Rad Plaid Cowl by Andrea Mowry. And I haven't made much progress. It's a very slow going stitch pattern. If you've never made it before, it's mosaic knitting. And so you're just, every round you're slipping stitches. So it's kind of like you have to do each round twice. So it really takes a while for it to grow. And one of her most recent um, sweater patterns has this stitch pattern and just knitting this as far as I have tells me I will not be making the sweater because I just don't have the patience for it. Um, but the yarn I'm using, I'm using um, Farmer's Daughter Fibers. This is their Odang base. It is a brush surrey alpaca held together with one of their sock bases um, in the same colorway, which I don't know the name of, so I'll try to find it and put it in the down bar, but no promises. <laughs> and um, it's it's a sparkle base, which I don't usually use. What are those called? Stellina. I don't usually use Stellina. I don't care for it personally, but it's really not, I don't, like, I just don't even know if you can see it. It's so faint in this that I'm not worried about it. And in the project, it really doesn't come through much. So I'm not too concerned about it. I think the Surrey kind of also helps to dim it down. Um, and then I'm holding it, or the contrast color is by Explorer Knits and Fibers. This is from her Ireland collection. Why is the name escaping me? I had it in my head a minute ago. Of course I didn't write it down. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I can't. Killarney. Killarney National Park. That's what it is. Okay. Um, so that's one that I will bring on my trip with me just to have maybe while I'm there to knit. And then I have an advent project that I did this year. I ordered yarn from Freckled Whimsy. She did an option for advent socks. So you knit a stripe a day essentially. So this was for 2023's Advent. And I did really great at first, but then I lost interest. And um, yeah, so, oh my gosh, what a mess I have going here. Anyway, so this, I'm like to the heel for the socks right now. And knitting the heel is my least favorite part of knitting a sock. So I'm kind of stalled out, but the colors are gorgeous. So I'm really happy about that. I will say, I didn't have any of the right size needles available, so I used zeros thinking, oh, I'll make it work and they're for sure gonna be too small for me. So a child will be getting these socks, I think, when I'm done. And that's another reason I feel like I stalled out because I already know they're gonna be too small. But self-striping yarn, super fun. I do love watching it come together. Now I just need to finish it and figure out who I'm gonna give them to. Uh, do you do advent knitting? Do you stall out on Advent knitting? I do not like super like formatted, regimented types of projects. I like to just go with the flow, whatever feels good at the moment. So that's another reason that those stalled out, but I will finish them, I think. Okay, that is all my whips. So now I am, whoa, everything got really bright. Um, now I am most excited to share my current or most recent finished object. This flew off the hook. I crocheted instead of knit this. Um, I have tons of scraps and I don't, every time I do a scrappy project, it just sits and it languishes and I never really finish them. So I wanted something that I knew I could fly through. And usually that's crochet because it goes quickly and I have so much scrap yarn to use up. Um, and then I wanted something that I didn't have to seam together because every time I think, oh, I'll do a crochet scrappy project, but then having to seam things together or crochet together as I go, I just, I don't find it enjoyable. So um, this flew, like just flew. And within like, I think less than two weeks I finished this. But this is a blanket. I'm gonna show up, stand up to try to show it. Oh my gosh, it is just massive. Well, it's not massive, but it's a really good sized blanket. Um, I'll come in kind of close here so you can see it. My favorite section is right in here. I love these colors together. So 
that's this. Um, since I just finished it, I haven't washed it or blocked it yet, but it's a really good size um, for like a couch blanket. Now I'm gonna leave it on me because I'm cold. Uh, so it's a super easy, beginner-friendly stitch pattern for crochet. Um, I found it on YouTube. It's just a free tutorial on YouTube. And it's by someone called Play Hooky With Me. Um, and I'll link the video too that I used to learn it down below. But it's very easy. You basically are just crocheting. You know, in the very middle you start. Let me find it. I just did this black little, you do these four little clusters and then you just go around and around and around and you change colors every round and just tie off and I just crochet over the ends as I go so I don't have to weave a bunch in and then so you end up with a square shaped blanket which some people might not like but it doesn't bother me at all so I am going to soak it well I also want to add I did a little border um using some more scrap yarn just in a DK weight um I should share, this is all crocheted using two strands of fingering weight held together. And so I just used a DK um, for the border and I just did a single crochet around the whole edge just to make it look a little more finished. Um, so I am going to soak this in wool wash and then put it in my spin dryer that I use for when I wash hand dyed yarn and get all that excess water out and hang it and put a fan on it and let it dry for a few days. Um, I expect it to grow maybe this much, this much on all sides. So I think I'll have a pretty good sized blanket, but I was curious how much yarn that I used. So I weighed it, the finished blanket yesterday, and it came out to like 12 and a half grams, or I'm sorry, 1,250 grams, 1,300 grams, somewhere around there. So between 12 and 13, 100 gram skeins of yarn, which is a lot of yarn. And I still have so much scrap yarn. So that tells me, <laughs> I have an absurd amount of scrap yarn. So I don't know if I'll make another blanket like this to try to use that up or what, but it was very exciting and it made me think maybe I could offer some DK kits for this, but they would be just so expensive if you wanted 12 skeins of yarn to make this. So I'll have to think about that. I'm not really sure. Um, but you could always do a custom sweater quantity if you wanted certain colors and just get three of each color that you want. Yeah, you can get four different colors, get 12 skeins, and you can just about get there, or you could supplement your existing stash um, with colors from me and make your own, or anyone. But yeah, so I'm really excited about this. I have not successfully finished a blanket in ages and ages and ages, so it's a really fun project to be able to share. Sorry, I keep tapping the screen. I always have terror that it's not focusing on me anymore properly. <laughs> Okay, I am flying through here. Um, let's see, does this even tell me? I wonder if there's a time counter on here, but I don't think there is. Okay, anywho. Uh, acquisitions. I just have two sock sets that I bought from Bella Filato Studio recently during her holiday update. And this is my favorite one that I got. It's called Reindeer Games from her Nordic Winter Collection. Um, let's see, it'll focus. Yeah, so it's just got these really bright, fun, kind of jewel, kind of bright tones. Um, let's see if I can take it out a little here. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. I'm very excited to make some socks with this yarn. Um, and then I'm also, I got another one. This one is called Noel. And this is a great kind of like holiday collection of colors. So those are my yarn acquisitions that I'm excited about. And that's it. I haven't had a need to buy yarn. As I said, I've been trying to work through my stash, so not a lot of new yarn coming in right now. However, I did just order some more yarn that I'll show you eventually once I get it. It's a pre-order, so it'll be a while, but it was from um, ZZ Textiles. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to share are a few things that will be coming to the shop soon. So just keep your eye on Instagram for updates and information about upcoming yarn releases. Um, I recently partnered with Wooly Bear Knits. So Emily, um, she asked me if I would dye some custom colorways for her on a mega bulky base that I had a limited amount of 
and I still had like 12 skeins left or something. So I dyed her some for some uh, one of a kind winter collection knits she's making. And this is one of the colorways. I had some overflow because I dyed a few incorrectly. So they will be coming to my shop. And this is called Smoke. Um, and I, I only have four skeins, but there's two different batches. There's this batch that looks like this, and this batch that's more gray. It's just got less white, and the black is a little less dense or dark. Um, so yeah, I will have those soon. I don't know exactly when, but soon. And then I am working on some just like winter sock sets. I love to dye sock sets. It's probably my most favorite thing to dye, so that's what I've been focused on, just going with the flow of what feels good to me. And so one of the sock sets I'll be offering is Birch Tree. And it's just a white base with some gray variegation in there, light gray and then black and like bark, well, I can't say bark, I don't know, maybe bark. The idea is that it's bark colored um, tones, but so I dyed a mini to match and go with it. So that's one of the sock sets. And then another one I have dyed is called Cake Donut, which I have not dyed in a very long time. And then the mini to go with that here is just this deep, rich mauve color that kind of matches the speckles that are in the yarn. So those are two of the socks that's coming. And then I have another one started that I don't have the mini dyed for yet. And I don't know what I'm calling this one either because it's a new colorway. Um, it's just like a bright bluish turquoise, very oceany um, with some blue and iris and goldish green speckles. So I think I'll do like a teal mini for this or something. I think that would look nice. And I also dyed this one of a kind colorway. It did not come out as the way I imagined in my mind, but it's still really fun. So I'll only have a few skeins of this um, on my plush sock base. Um, but yeah, it's just fun and bright. Orange fuchsia, chartreuse, really fun colors. And then I think I'll also have a few overflow skeins of sugar cookies from my most recent pre-order. If you ordered from that, thank you very much. And gosh, I think that's it for all the new yarn that I've been working. Oh no, that's a lie. One more, I dyed up some tweed DK that I had. I really liked that chartreuse color that was in the last skein I showed you. So I decided to make some in just that color because Gosh, that's so fun. I love this color. It's such a good color. <sighs> that's everything. That's everything yarn related that I have. <laughs> um, so what else? What else do I have to share? Um, I just finished a puzzle that I bought in the last six months or so from Hedgehog Fibers and I'm going to Mod Podge it together, glue it together, which I've never done with a puzzle, but I think it'll be really cute. Um, to hang in my yarn studio. So I am going to glue that puzzle together. I'll pop a picture up here so you can see it <laughs> all finished. And then um, right now I have a sale going on in the shop but it ends tomorrow and I don't know when this video is going up. So maybe just, I should cut that out. Um, <laughs> what else is going on? I don't know, my reading is kind of stalled. I'm reading Happy Place right now, The Happy Place, something like that by the author that everybody loves right now. Do I have another book up there? I can find her name. My mind is spacing. But she wrote Book Lovers, all those things. So I'm reading one of her books, her most recent release right now, and the first chapter hooked me. I'm into it. I just haven't had time to continue reading it. And I just watched Oppenheimer, the movie, yesterday. Uh, it was good. The acting was stellar. Stellar cast. But holy three hours of dialogue. Wow. Wow. It was just like, I'm not a history buff. I am not super into historical events and stuff. So 
it held my interest, but the dialogue was really exhausting to me. To just like have to keep up with the stories and so many characters and how everything played into what and I just, I don't know. I know people love the movie, but maybe it's because they love history. I don't know. So it was good. I would recommend it, but I don't think I'll be watching it many times in my life. Unlike other movies that I could watch a million times, like Only You or Legends of the Fall. Anything Brad Pitt's in, really. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my story. That's all I've got. So um, if you have any questions about anything that I've mentioned and you can't find the answer in the description of the video, please let me know. Put it in the comments. Give the video a like if you enjoyed the episode and would like to see more. Um, any questions, send them my way. I'd love to help answer your questions. And I can always answer on the next episode or in the comments. And yeah, that's all I have. I hope you're enjoying your January and having a good winter and that the post holidays are good for you and your families and everything's going well. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.